Hi, it's Katie Parker. We're going to be looking at making one of these amazing beaded beads today. The beads that come in the kit are absolutely beautiful. They've got, got kind of one facet on them, so occasionally you get that facet coming through to the front and you get that amazing sparkle. Okay, so you can see all the way around that. And it's a lot easier than what you think it's going to be to bead around a shape. So we're going to start with this middle section and we're going to move on to doing a little bit of peyote. I'm only going to cover that very briefly because peyote is, is a, a basic technique and then we're going to move on to how we create the form around the shape. To start our peyote we're going to make a strip of uh, peyote to pop around this middle part of the bead, so that middle section of the bead there. And we need to make a length of peyote which is 29 beads long and we start off with a and it's a row of six that go in this way so very quickly i will just go through how to start peyote so i've got a stop bead and six beads on my thread i'm using a, very, a much shorter piece of thread at the moment but the thread that you need to, to bead the entire beaded bead is around about six foot a little bit more just in case so moving that tail out of the way, I've got my beads coming uh, down towards me and I'm going to work my way back up. So I'm going to pick up a bead and come through the next bead. And then I'm going to pick up another bead and miss a bead and come through the next bead. Keeping it nice and tight and tugged together and picking up another bead and coming through the last bead. Making sure you miss the stop bead. Okay, and you should have this type of shape. We'll just bring it up like so. And then you're just gonna work back down, which is just your basic peyote. So picking up a bead and go through your sticky out bead. Pull through, picking up a bead going through the next sticky out bead, pull through and picking up a bead and going through your next sticky out bead, like so. So you're just going to continue doing that all the way along and so you can count 29 beads at the bottom and once you count that 29 beads, so just move on to this piece, you need to count your 29 beads, let me just get this the right way around, there we go. 29 beads, top and bottom, so that means your one thread is cut, your tail end is at the top and this thread's at the bottom and that means you'll have an even number of beads on each side. So just moving on to this piece here now. So now we need to attach this to our bead. Now we do this by, well I do it a little bit of a cheat way, I pop a little bit of tape, uh, double sided tape just a, around the middle there because these beads are beautiful, they're very lightweight so that you know it's not, they're nice and easy to wear even with the beads on them but they're very slippery so what I tend to do is pop a little bit of tape on and because they're so shiny and slippery sometimes it's a, it, the tape takes a bit to stick on but it's just a matter of pulling that off and leaving that tape behind. So I tend to pop a little bit on each side so that I've got some gaps where there's no tape. And pulling that off there. So then what I will do is I'll place this so my tape parts are on each side. So that's around about the middle and pull these around like so. And what you'll find is that 29 beads will make a nice tight fit around there. And then we can just, just do what we would normally do if we were zipping up a peyote stitch. We would start coming through the opposite side here. So my thread is exiting here. So I'm coming through this opposite bead at this side. And this is what we call zipping up. Then I'm gonna come through the opposite sticky out bead at the other side. So you're going through all those sticky out beads, like so, and just tug it gently. You can tighten it all up when you get to the the other end. You'll be doing this a lot easier so that you can kind of hold it in front of you. I'm having to hold it down for the camera so probably looks a little bit more awkward when I'm doing it. So through here and then through that last one like 
like so. So I've zipped all the way up now. I can just manipulate that. I'm just holding that to give it a little tug. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that stop bead. So just pulling that off there, holding that tail out of the way. And then I'm going to zigzag all the way back down again. So I'm going to go through this bead and then just follow your thread path. So you see, just adding that coming back down again will pull everything all together. So coming back down this one and skip through two beads there. Just making sure you're following that peyote thread path and through those two beads and through the last bead at the top there. Okay, so that's nice and secure on there. Now you can do it without the tape. It's not a problem to do it without the tape. I just find it, it, it can slip and things. Now my bead's not quite straight there, but I know, but because I didn't do it all the way around, I can just manipulate this a little bit and get it so the holes at the top there, which is fine. But it just gives you that little bit of tack for it to hold. If you haven't got tape, you could use uh, like little glue dots or something like that but it makes your life easier. So now we're gonna move on to, to creating the rest of the form, which everything else is, is done now in brick stitch. So what we need to do is pick up a bead. So my thread is exiting. I'm gonna try and bring this up to the camera a bit more. So my thread is exiting this bead here. I've picked up a bead on my thread. I've let that drop down a little. And then what I need to do is go to the next thread bridge. So the thread bridge is that little bit of thread that's in between each bead on the row, the, the top row. So I've gone underneath the thread bridge and come through. And now I need to go up the bead. So up the actual bead that we added. What that will do is make that sit there. And then if you just pop your nail on top, give it a gentle tug and that bead sat in there. So we can pick up another bead, go through the next thread bridge underneath, pull that down, pull that up, then come up through the bead. Always remember to come up through the beads, otherwise it won't sit as nicely as you want it to do. And just popping your fingernail on top and just giving it a slight tug will help it sit in position. So picking up a bead underneath that thread bridge, so you're coming underneath towards yourself, pulling that through and then coming up that bead and then asking that to sit down nicely. So you're going to continue all the way around doing this and you, once you get to the end you just start again so your thread will be at the top and what I tend to do is just go around a little loop around the last, the first and last bead of a row and then start the next. So this is the stage I just spoke about. So this is getting all the way around on that first um, complete loop. And my thread is exiting this last bead that I've just popped on. So, and this, this is the, the part where I said I just make a little loop around this, this little section because otherwise there is no thread bridge between these two. So we just need to link them together. So coming through that first bead I added and then back up the last bead I added will just complete that circuit and give us a full loop. So this has now got a thread bridge to work on. So adding a new row, again we're just going to pick up a bead like that, whoops, let that come down onto our thread and then we're going to come through that thread bridge, the one we just made, and then back up through the bead. So just be careful you don't catch that thread bridge again, and back up through the bead, and then we're on to our next row. Now this is a row where we're going to start to cinch in. So we're probably going to add, I tend to do it by eye rather than following a pattern, because you can see yourself when, when there's a gap, when there isn't a gap, and you can see it building up. So just continuing on, maybe add three, three beads or so, and then think, right, I need to cinch that in a little bit, so decrease a little bit. So I've added three beads there, so now I'm gonna pick up this one. I'm gonna miss this thread bridge and then come through the next one. Now it will create a tiny gap, 
but don't worry it, in the grand scheme of things that will kind of disappear so just holding that in and pulling those together and that will cinch it in so you can see there if I just bring that up to the camera you can see there there's not much of a gap there at all even though I did miss one of those thread bridges so again picking a bead up and then coming through the next thread bridge I wouldn't recommend doing two in a row two two misses in a row just build it up as you go so adding another one and another one And keep building these up until you can miss a bridge so probably on this row it's about every three but just like I say do it by eye you can see if you need to miss one or not and then each row you'll miss a few more so this is the one that I'm going to miss one so I've missed the next thread bridge I've gone through the next one and pulling that in again and then just giving that a gentle tug you don't want to pull it off off the bead but just a gentle tug and it'll pull it into position it just kind of cinches everything in so you're going to continue working up and up and up until you come to a quite small circle at the top and i know it probably looks a little bit daunting at first but it does cinch in quite quickly and quite neatly just by missing adding a couple missing missing a thread bridge and just decreasing and decreasing it as you as you go up towards that this end and then you will end up with something like this so don't be worried about getting too close to the to this hole you don't want to be covering that up because you don't you know you don't know what you're going to actually be wanting to put through there just yet so i'm just going to add a needle to the thread so i'm using a six pound thread uh, six pound fire line and size 12 beading needles and what i tend to do is i tend to just smooth out the end of my thread with some pliers first then holding my thread and pulling it right in so I can only just see the tip and then coming over the thread and you'll be able to thread it. So you've got a quick threading tutorial there as well. I'm just moving this one out of the way. So I'm just gonna show you once we get to this stage and we've added all the beads we can, I wouldn't add any more around there because you're gonna, you could be pushing a bead up to the, up right up to it. Or you might want a bead to sit in there. So you don't want it to be too bulky around around the, the hole of the bead. So then all you're going to do is you're gonna follow your thread path down towards that center section. And then you're just gonna continue again. Now you're gonna have quite a few passes of thread through there, so don't be afraid to just support your work and then use some pliers to take your thread through and just work your way back down towards the other side. you get to the other side of the here so I'm just going to work through there and I'll join you when I'm actually over here so once you've worked your way down from this end right down to the other side of this uh, peyote strip that we made that's the point where you're going to start this whole process again of this brick stitch so working along just and just exit out of one of the the beads on this edge just add a bead through the next thread bridge and working your way around exactly the same. So one full round and then start those decreases. So I'm just gonna work on this, this piece and I'm gonna meet you and show you just what, it, what it's like when we um, when we get to this, this end bit here. So I'm just gonna work up here and I'll see you again in two seconds. So I've carried on beading. So this is uh, the other end the central section and I've carried on beading and brick stitch all the way up to the top. So I'm just gonna show you this last row that's going in. So just bring that up a little bit. So exiting this bead here, again, just continuing with our brick stitch. I've added a bead to my thread and through. So we're gonna to have to cinch it in even more here. So I'm gonna miss the thread and come through the next one and through back up through the bead and just give it a quite a good tug on that on those these ones at the top to really cinch it in really make it stay in place so we're going to go through this next bridge underneath the bridge and back up through the bead pop 
putting my fingernail on top of the bead there, giving it a tug. And I think we will go through the next one. Like I say, it's best just to do it by eye, otherwise you'll end up with big gaps or, or too many in. So just really work on it as you see it. So this one I'm going to miss. There is a thread bridge there. I'm going to come through the next one. And so on and so forth. Okay, adding another one. I'm going to go through the next bridge. And back up through. Adding another bead. I'm going to miss the next bridge and come through this one here. So there is one here. I'm going to come through this one. And back up through. And picking up another bead. I go through the next one. And back up. And again, I'm going to miss this one and come through the next one. And through. Cinch that in just by tugging it, it kind of cinches it all in. It looks like it's going to be a big gap, but it's not. And I'm going to go through the next one. Gets a little bit more tricky just at this top edge, just to get your bead underneath that, your needle underneath that thread bridge. And there, I know that looks like quite a, a big gap there, but I'm just going to put one bead in there. You're always better to not overcrowd, because if you overcrowd, that's when you end up with beads trying to poke out and it's not as spherical. So that's our last bead in. Again, even though we don't need that thread bridge there, I just like to finish it off nice and neatly. So create that last bridge and that'll cinch everything together. And that is basically it done. So all I would do then is work my thread back down, down to the other side. This is my tail thread from that uh, beginning peyote section. I would just work that in, in through a few beads and then snip off. And then that, that's ready to add to your collection of beaded beads. So there you go. Thank you for watching. That's been a really enjoyable project. I hope you love the kits too. See you soon.